Hello, today on this channel, we have an amazing trader with us who has been trading for the past 10 years and has been consistently profitable in his trading journey. He is also the co-founder of TradeCity and has assisted thousands of people all over the world in becoming profitable traders. Today, he has revealed his trading journey, strategy, the holy grail of trading and his secret recipe for becoming a successful and consistently profitable trader in this interview. For those who are new to this channel, on this channel, we focus on providing real education, techniques and strategies for traders who are serious about their trading career. I plan to upload many more videos to this channel and bring on amazing traders all around the world to share their knowledge with you. So make sure you like the video and subscribe to this channel. Now, without any further ado, let's get started. So what's up? How have you been? Good. Yeah. And thank you for having me. Yeah, it's, it's like, I'm glad to have you. I, I've already told you that I've really learned a lot from you. I've also been in, you know, that Instagram lives you used to take before, but I cannot really find your Instagram ID right now. I'm not sure. Why. No, I'm completely, I'm completely off social media for, for the most part. Okay. Like, like a social detox. Um, yeah, but I don't plan to, to come back. So um, I found that it's in too much noise and I didn't like it so much. So I decided to take a break from it initially and then I enjoyed it so much without it. So I decided yeah. to stay. Okay. Okay. No, those sessions are like, really helpful for me. And a lot right. of your viewers like must be missing those sessions, but it's good. You know, yeah. like many times you feel that something's not right for you. You should take it out of your life, I guess. Right. And now okay. I'm very active on YouTube mostly. So yeah, that's where yeah. most of the time is spent. Okay. That's, that's really good. Okay. So Rolf, I have been following you and your videos for a very long, long time now. And I have seen your story and I know like the success you have achieved in Forex and trading as a whole. So how about you share your story with our viewers so that they can know where you came from and what your story is like. Right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so when I was 14 or 13, I had my first job and I really started to like to make money on my own. I was doing the paper boy stuff and um, I really liked to earn money back then. So very early on, um, so this was before 2000, um, I started getting involved in making websites. And um, back then you could make a decent amount of money um, online and that was really fascinating. And ever since then, I, I knew that I was never going to work for anybody else. And I was always trying to work for myself. And um, then I was finishing my high school and I was thinking about what should I do with my life? And I thought, okay, let's, let's go to university. I didn't want to get into a job. And I felt that university was buying me some time. And I was already started to get into Forex a little bit as well, into trading. So I thought, okay, I have five years until I get my degree. And I will just use the five years to put as much time into my trading, into websites, into all of that, and see where it goes. And then I was finishing my degree. And um, it was about time to get a job or do something else. But obviously, as a student, I was working as a student always next, um, besides my uh, studies. Obviously, you cannot save enough money to have yeah. a decent life, fund a trading account, especially in Germany. So I thought, okay, I will head off to, in, uh, to, to in, uh, Asia, uh, find a country where the living expenses are much, much lower. So I have more time um, to, to pursue this dream. So I kept funding yeah. my trading account, yeah. growing it, and started doing Edgefunk and Trade Society. And then over time, as everything grew, um, I knew that okay, I, I really didn't need to, to get a job. And this is not something that I could pursue for, for indefinitely, hopefully. So yeah, that's uh, how I ended up uh, here now, eventually. Okay. Uh, yeah, you are in Thailand now, right? Like somewhere a yes. few years back, I, I knew that you were in Thailand because you used to post all those stories and all. So right, yes. I've also heard that you have said it uh, many times that you like to travel a lot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, how does it go for you? How is traveling and trading for you? Is it like a deep, yeah. like a dream came through, or it is? Many people think it as it's very cool to travel and trade. It looks very catchy, 
right? But is it that good? Or uh, it's tough. Yeah. What do you think about it? It only looks that good on uh, it only looks that good on Instagram. In reality, it's uh, <laughs> it's very different and it's very difficult. I would say because obviously, as a trader, you need to be in front of your charts most of the time, or at least a few hours every day. And so it's not how you would generally travel when you're on holidays. What I ended up doing is that I would pick a city, and I uh, I would stay there for a few for a few weeks. And so I was not forced to do all the sightseeing or the exploring in just a few yeah. days. So I could um, split it in between having a few days where I just uh, work and then have the weekend off where I can explore things or go out on the evenings or in the mornings, depending on the time, for, uh, time zones that I'm trading. So trading and traveling is a very different from what people think. It's, it's still nice. It's obviously um, something that I wouldn't miss, but it's... Uh, yeah, it's a lot of discipline, I would say, needs to get in that, that you manage your time, manage yourself, and then it's doable, yeah. Uh, the same thing, like, actually happened with me. I once decided to, you know, like, travel and trade, because I have seen a lot of people do that, and yeah. I saw it on Instagram, so it was very new thing to me. And it was very good to, like, you know, you can travel and trade, but when I tried to do that, like, my growth was com completely like miserable. I was not able to focus. I think to, tra to travel and trade, it's not what you see on Instagram because it affects you mentally. You are not that focused and focus is something that you need while trading, right? So that's what, it's glad to see that I'm not the only one uh, struggling with that. <laughs> yeah, you need to be on. very organized. Yeah, you need to have like a set schedule. But I think um, that's true for if you want to get into trading and you still have your nine to five, it's the same thing applies. Uh, you yeah. need to make sure that yeah. because you only have a little amount of time, maybe in the mornings a little bit, maybe in the evenings, so that you know exactly at what time you're going to sit in front of your charts when you come home or before you work, and then exactly know what are you going to do with that time because you don't want to waste it because you also probably want to spend time with your family, with your kids, you have hobbies with your friends. So you really need to make sure that you really know when you have blocked out the trading time that you use it most effectively. And so that's, uh, yeah, it's the same whether you want to travel or whether you have a nine yeah. to five job. It's both very, uh, yeah, you need to have a good schedule and then discipline to follow the schedule. Yeah, it is like discipline is the key, right? Over your trading. Yes. So yeah, yes. once I was watching your uh, Instagram live, a few years back when you were on Instagram, I was watching your Instagram live. So there were a few things that you gave a lot of uh, importance. Like every weekend you used to put the stories of backtesting and analyzing the total chart. Also about journaling or maintaining a journal. So why do you think all of these things are important or why is it necessary? All right. Yeah, so... Um... Backtesting, for example, I'm, I'm just doing a, a backtesting session. I've been doing it over the weekend. And for me, backtesting, the purpose of backtesting for me is that trading can be very repetitive. Obviously, it can be very boring and dull because once you have a strategy, you're just executing the same thing day in and day out. And I am more of a creative person. I need to have some creativity. And some people look for or get, the, get their creativity outside of trading. They play an instrument or they do some arts. But for me, backtesting brings this creativity a little bit back into the trading world. So, for example, you think about, okay, how can I approach a new strategy? What are the things, the objectives that I want to achieve? What are the tools that are there? How can I combine different uh, timeframes, different trading tools? What are systems that I can I, um, test? What about different entries and exit strategies, uh, trade management approaches? So they're very uh, nice mental challenge as well. So that is how I define or how backtest fits into what I what I do. Yeah. Okay. So you also like need to be prepared for what's coming on Monday, right? Like so that you can yes. backtest on the weekends and then you can be prepared or for the new week that's up ahead. Correct. Yeah. Also, that's like, how I like you also like uh, mentioned about journaling, like you used to maintain a journal and then put everything of those on the journal. Why do you think to maintain a journal is that important? 
Like, how does it help a yeah. trader? You can ask that question, or every of your viewers can ask it. Do you need a journal? Just ask yourself, do you remember your last, let's say five or 10 trades? And do you really remember every little detail about your trades? Was the entry good execute? Was it a bad entry too early, too late? Was the trade management okay? Did you maybe mismanage each trade? Could you have gotten a bad exit? What was your stop loss placement? And if you, obviously, you know, I, so personally for me, I don't remember every little detail about my last 10 trades. And that shows you immediately the need for a trading journal. You need to have a place where you can record what you have done so that you can learn from that. And you can do more of the things that work. You can find out the things that are not working for you. You can find your unique personal weaknesses. Every trader usually has those things that they keep repeating and repeating and it's costing them a lot of money. And you need to have a place where you capture your trades. It's also a tool for accountability. Um, so it holds you accountable yeah. when you have to face the data and there's no way around, around it. You cannot sugarcoat it. The, the journal doesn't lie to you. You see the data, it shows you you have messed exactly. up and then it's up to you. Are you going to keep messing up or do you do something about it? But the journal is really, it has many purposes, but um, it, it needs to be a, uh, it's a sign that you take the trading uh, serious enough. Yeah, so would you see it, it helps you be, become a better trader? Like it shows you the reality of what you are right now. And it tells you what your mistakes are so that you can actually learn from it. Because do you think it's like that? Yes, because I'm sure you know, when you are about to take a trade and it doesn't look perfect, but in your head, you can always make it sound okay. You can always find excuses why you should be a little bit too early. You think, oh, the market is going to run away from me or you have lost and you just keep widening the stop loss a little bit. You know, you shouldn't be doing it, but you think the market will turn around. And one thing is um, good about a trading journal. When you keep that in mind, you have to come back to your trading journal and enter this trade in your trading journal. And what, how is it going to look in your journal if you know you have to enter for the tenth time that you have messed up and made a stupid mistake, and you know you shouldn't have been out? So, as a trader, we are always sitting in front of our screens in our trading uh, desk all by ourselves, and that is uh, it can be can be challenging then to improve or make the right decision because if it's only in our head it's all it sounds better than it is but if you have this place it's a uh, it's a little bit like somebody uh, looking over your shoulder holding you accountable and that is very important i think for traders um, because it's such a lonely activity and that's uh, helpful i completely agree with that from the time i started maintaining journal i was actually able to look at my mistakes and this time I was able to actually find a way to solve them. I feel like trading is something where you will do a lot of mistakes. And the only way to go forward is to solve all of those, like to find out a way to, so that you don't do that mistakes again. And I think that journal, like maintaining a journal is a way to do solve that. Yes. Uh, also, so, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. As a, I, I have told a story on my YouTube, but um, a trader sent me his journal and he said, Rob, I'm about to give up on trading. I've been trading for two years and it's not working. Here's my journal. If you want to take a look, you can do it, but I'm, I'm done with trading. And I was looking into his journal and I found that there, are, there were two mistakes that he kept repeating. And okay. if you would exclude the trades that those two mistakes uh, have in common, he would have been a profitable trader. So I said to this trader and said, hey, um, at the core, there is profitable trading strategy. So your trading strategy seems to be making money. But those two things, you keep repeating them and they put you in the red. But if you would stop those, you would be a profitable trader. And this trader answered and he said he had no idea. He didn't know that uh, was actually the case. He thought his strategy was losing. And then he had new motivation to keep, um, keep trading and keep at it. So a journal is, a, is really, really so valuable on many different levels. Uh, that's a, such an important tool. Yes, actually, uh, actually it is. But, you know, you, me, like 
most of the traders those are successful they know that maintaining a journal is essential and we even like yes. tell our viewers to maintain a journal but why do you think it is so hard that they excuse it or they are not able to maintain it why do you think it is so hard about maintaining a journal i think there are um, a few different reasons i think the most or well, one reason is that uh, that people don't take trading seriously enough it's just something that they think is maybe a way out and it's um they're not putting the time and they don't take it seriously however um i think that many traders are not aware of the benefits that a journal can have so they they don't see the point of actually journaling and then obviously it's a very dull activity you sit there with your journal you type in the data and then you don't even know what you are actually getting out of it so i think that's a very very big mistake or a big issue if you don't know what the journal is going to give you uh then it's it's quite pointless obviously to do it and then you think you could be doing better stuff one of another very major point is that i think is that the conception of what it is to be a trader um or it takes is very skewed on um, skewed on social media it's all about entries and strategies the marketing is only about that and it gives the import or it gives the impression that you just have to find a, a, a trading strategy and that's the solution however obviously that's not the reality and you can have best trading strategy and give it to a trader who has not mastered the skills that are required to execute it, uh, the trading strategy on a good level then the best strategy is also going to lose money so i think it's very important that you overcome um or get over this thing that you think okay i only need to find a strategy and then everything is solved and i'm going to make money so i think those are among the top reasons why journaling is often overlooked and yeah it's it's work yeah. and yes <laughs> yeah that's true all those reasons i think something that stops most of the people from doing it but everyone should everyone watching this interview right now journaling is very important if you want to be really a professional trader then you should maintain a journal i would like to ask you what are the things that you put in your journal so that my viewers can actually learn from it and they will know what to do when they maintain a journal so that they get to start the right way so I think in the beginning when you are a struggling trader then and you have never done or had a journaling routine keep it very very simple um make sure that it is it's doable it's not something that is going to take up um hours and hours every day so you just want to get into the habit of journaling and in the beginning the most important thing the most bang for your buck is where you see the biggest improvements In the beginning you don't need to get into the nitty gritty should you set your stop loss a little bit further away or tighter should you manage this a little bit differently what you really and what I've I've looked at hundreds and hundreds of trading journals I've done dozens of youtube videos about uh, reviewing journals and what I found is that the struggling traders what they need to make sure is that they get into this um process oriented mindset so they just they look at their trade and they judge it by the process and you can ask yourself did you obey your trading entry rules did you obey your trading exit rules and did you obey your trading management rules and you need to have a trading strategy obviously so that you know okay, what are my entry rules what i'm looking for in a good trade and then you can just say yes i did adhere to the rules or no i didn't and you do that for your trade management and your strategy uh, your exit as well and those three data points are a very very good start for a trading journal so you ask is the entry good exit the management and then this is doable it takes not very long for every trade that you take but you get a lot of insights already into your trading what i would also recommend at that point just grab a screenshot of the trade so that you can come back to your trades i do that usually every um every weekend or every second weekend that i go through my last um week's trades and i just look at the level of execution they look very similar did i make a mistake and those are very very good starting points for maintaining a trading journal yeah that that's exceptional i would say and i've also like 
heard that you are the founder of Edgewong. Like it is a trading journal. It is a trading journal tool, right? Would you like to right, say, yes. like, tell my viewers about that? Yes. So um, I studied finance um, in university, and I was working in a corporate job. And my my former boss was paying so much attention to numbers and numbers and numbers. And yeah. this is where I started to really get a. Oh, I saw the importance of really knowing your numbers that you can then come back and analyze it and tracking and so on. And um, I was trading and working at the same time. So I thought, hmm, that's interesting. Um, this should probably apply to trading as well. So I started just very basically in Excel sheet, track my data. And um, that was really, really a big help already uh, in the beginning. And then I met Moritz, who is my co-founder uh, for Edgewonk. And he yeah. used to be a professional yeah. poker player. And in poker, everybody is tracking their poker history. Everybody, without exception, um, every, every poker player does it. And he brought this to trading as well. When he transitioned from poker to Forex, immediately he had, it was natural for him that he was also recording his trading. And so when I met him, I had a trading journal. He had a trading journal. And we had exchanged our journals. And we combine them to make, uh, to look at what is he doing well, what am I doing well, and we combine it to make a nice journal. And that's how Edgewong started. And now it's a, it's a web-based journal. We have been um, running it for, I think, five or six years. And um, yeah, it's very customizable. It works for every market, whether you're a swing trader, a day trader, for every currency around the world, whatever you're, uh, you are in the world, it works for you. And we pay a lot of attention to this qualitative um, approach. So tracking how disciplined are you, how well are you respecting your rules, um, and so help you to um, learn and maintain good trading habits. We're going away a little bit from this goal-oriented mindset where you only look at, okay, the trade is a winner. I must have done something good. The trade is a loser. I must have done something wrong. But that's not the right way because obviously you can do everything yes. right in trading and this trade still doesn't work out. And that's, uh, you need to then look at the trade. Did I execute it well? And that's, uh, that's a good uh, way of going. And then obviously later on, you can go into the nitty gritty. We have all the data, everything else for you as well. But um, the core is really this quality, uh, quantitative, how well are you respecting your rules? And uh, that's a big, big part of it as well. Yeah, like it would be, I think it would be very helpful for readers to directly have everything. They just have to put the, whatever they did on the day, like their trades, they have to enter the stop losses and everything they did while executing a trade and they can directly analyze from it. So I think it would be very helpful to like maintain a journal like this big journal to directly shifting it, like having everything in your laptop. So right. that makes a lot yeah, of and we. That's yeah, absolutely. And a lot of traders have those those notebooks um, as well, those diaries. But yeah. what I found is you don't get a lot of value out of it unless you go back to the diary and really analyze it. So we included a diary part in Edgewonk as well, so you can write down your notes, you can tag it, and that way you can combine the statistic analysis, the process-oriented, um, rule-based analysis, and also this diary component. You have everything in there. You can add screenshots to your trades. So. We really, wow. the goal of Edgewong is really that there's nothing else that you need. You have everything about your trading in one place. Everything you need to know about your trading is, is there as well. That's amazing. I would like really love to try it and I will try it sometime. Okay, so now uh, that was all about the journal, right? Now there is this thing, like this mentality, if you, you must have seen or observed this. Many new traders, what they do, what they think is, Whenever they see a millionaire trader or a successful trader, they think that they have some sort of a magical strategy. Like he must be using, he's a millionaire trader, he must be using this strategy or a holy grail. So what is your trading style all about? What kind of trading strategy do you use? So that our viewers know there's no holy grail, there are strategies then you have to work. So Yeah, so yeah, unfortunately, I don't have the holy grail. I don't have a crystal ball, but uh, my trading style over the years has... Um, become more and more simple. I started with the with indicators and all of those things, and I still use indicators. I think there's also a lot of misconception about them. 
there's nothing wrong with it. If you look at the best traders, Marty Schwartz, um, the turtle traders, they all used um, indicators. So they definitely are very worth having. I still use them. I think um, for a strategy, the strategy is not, obviously it's important to have, but what I've seen and I've mentored, I don't know, hundreds of traders um, over the years, what I've seen is um, you need to have the strategy in the right uh, time frame context. So the time frame choice is often overlooked. People just ask you what is the best time frame, but the uh, the, que the real question is what is the rest the best time frame for you? Because the time frame choice is very 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 important because there are so many implications. How long are you going to be in the trade? Or first of all, how long do you have to wait for a trade? If you're on the higher time frames and you are a swing trader, mm -hmm. you have to wait for for days or hours at least. And then once you're in the trade, you have to hold it for a long time. You may have to hold it over the weekend, which not everybody likes. You have to hold it through news events, which people don't like because there's another area of, uh, or a level of risk as well. And so the time frame choice, when somebody comes to us, the time frame choice is something that is really, really important. And then that's where you put the strategy in there. So for me, basically what I do is I have a multi-time frame approach. It's very basic. The higher time frame, um, I look for the directional bias. So on the time, higher time frame, I look for what are the signals? Am I going to be long, short oriented, or neutral? And then I will just drop to the lower time frame and uh, with some classical pattern analysis, chart analysis, um, some price action, I will just then determine or look for the entries into the direction that the higher time frame gave me. Okay, so you like to combine the indicators plus some price action, right? You believe that yes. indicators are essential and you can combine it with price action. It all depends upon what time frame and what are you trying to do in the markets or what, what are you trying to look for, right? Right, yes. yes. So one more thing I would like to ask is there are, you know, hundreds of strategies like indicators based and then price action mm -hmm. and then there is Elliott Wave and there are lots of strategies in the market. So if someone is trying to get into Forex trading, or any kind of trading, what do you think? How do you suggest they should look for a strategy or a trading style? Yes, I think this is very over overrated. So a good mentor, if you have a trading mentor, the mentor will help you take the strategy and adapt it to your own personal risk profile and needs and the way you look at charts. And the specific strategy, whether you use Elliott Wave or a Dantian channel or a moving average or no indicator at all, that's, I would say not, I don't think it's irrelevant, but it's not important. Um, there has been those famous coin flip experiments. I'm not sure if you have seen them uh, where yeah. they flip a coin in the morning and the coin determines are you long, short or whatever. And then all the money was made by managing the trade. And there was no entry system. There was no strategy at all involved. So that shows you really that strategy is very overrated. And the failure rate of traders is extremely high. And I think one of those reasons is also that just traders put the wrong, um, or they put the focus on the wrong things. So instead of stressing out about finding your best system and then you do system hopping, just try to work on your skills, find a strategy, whatever it is. When somebody comes to you, for example, you give them a strategy maybe, and then you try to master yourself. You try to apply the strategy in the right way. You try to stop FOMOing, no revenge trading. And this way you can <clears throat> actually improve your trading skills much, much faster. Whether you're making money or not, um, that is then the second question. But first you need to learn those meta skills that it takes to become a, a better trader. So don't worry. It's, I know it's very hard when traders come to us, it's super hard to convince or to not convince them, but to show them that the strategy is second. First of all, you need to really make sure that whatever strategy you're using, you can actually follow the, the, the rules and the things. So that's, uh, I know it's a very unsatisfying answer for new traders, especially because you've only seen strategies, entries, that's it. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately that's not how it goes. So find somebody who can really help you develop good trading habits, who is there for you. And that is, I think, the right way to go about it. Yeah, that's that's true. YouTube and 
all the advertisement they have like you know made the new made it very hard for beginners because of all the ads they see and the cars behind a trader with a laptop gold chains and all that it completely you know change their mindset of how to look at trading they think of the first thing they think of is he has a holy grail strategy and that's how he had made that much but whatever you said that first you have to you know believe in yourself and you have to train yourself and secondary is like the secondary thing the first thing is to work on yourself so yeah because yeah again no matter how good the system is that you have if you cannot follow the rules then it just doesn't matter how good the system is yeah yeah uh also i would like to ask you uh there is point in someone's life or a trader's life where he think that yes i have made it like there was a time in my life when i started to making 30% a year consistently for two years and i was like yes i have made it so what is that point in your life where you felt that yes i have made it like i have made it in trading i don't know um that's a very good question to be honest i still i still work probably much much more than i have to because there's always this feeling that um because i've i've been trading for 14 years and i've seen many strategies come and go the markets are changing um and so i keep working much harder and i don't know if there's a there's a i what really helped me um and i talk a lot of, about this with morris as well about the mental side what really helped and I, by the way do you know dr van tharp uh no like i may have heard about him but i don't really like yeah he was featured in the market wizards he has been training and coaching one of the best traders that have been and he okay. said that what you what is really going to help you build confidence is acquiring the skills so even if somebody takes everything away from you you have the skills to to make it all back and that's um, that was a really big shift for for my thinking where i was again i was going away from looking for the holy grail more and more and i was really putting a lot of energy and time and spend a lot of money on building myself really taking good care of myself um investing in in courses we often go to well before all of this happened we often went to a seminar some other people we booked coaching sessions from other people to just always continuously work on yourself and i think i i often say this to our students as well not many traders will make it as a trader but the time that you're spending now with this trading thing really make it worth it don't focus only on charts and entries but try to find your own personal weaknesses build your strength take good care for yourself read good books and all of those things will help you even if you're not in trading anymore in 10 years they will still be very valuable and you don't you're not going to look at it as a waste of time so i don't think there's ever a time where i just say i think i've made it um i think you just grow your confidence grows when your skills grow and yeah but uh, i don't know there's a, a single point yeah. where i could no quite... that was a good answer actually that was a good answer yeah. because uh the thing you mentioned that you know there is a phase where shifts his focus from focusing on a holy grail to improving as a trader like i think this is a phase like in every other traders like all over trade, like no matter what the who the trade trader is this has happened to each one of them like it has it has happened to me and i've read a few books and even in that they have told about this that this shift is very common and this shift has happened with them too so i think that's a really good answer that which you gave i think this point came for or comes for a lot of people and i think came from me you're going to hit this point in your trading early on when you're not thinking about all of those meta skills and you just lose money and money and money and it becomes so painful and then there's this crossroad where you either going to quit or you're going to ask yourself okay why hasn't this been working and how can i turn things around and then you or many traders then start looking for for those things on how to take it seriously so this crossroad is very very important and yeah that's that's it yeah 
it's like that crossroad you need you, you know at that time and usually that is the time when many people quit but i think they should not because tough situations are meant to make you strong if you like if something broke you take it as a lesson and make yourself strong build a good character and do not quit because trading is a skill and skill requires a time and when you master it it stays for you for the entire life right it is going to reward you for being strong when you are struggling and then it will reward you for like for your entire life so that's really good so yes like you and me like you know we educate people about trading right but we have seen that trading is projected now as a scam to many people like many people believe that trading is a scam and most of the people they only lose money right because even if you ask anyone about trade uh, uh, about trading they say that it is a scam like you will only lose money over there so why do you think like a lot of people that majority about 90 to 95% of people why do they lose in trading what do you think is the most important reason behind this wow there's so many um <laughs> yeah so i'm not even sure where to start there's just so many i think <clears throat> that not taking it seriously is uh, it's just a big one um, many people believe or not believe many people approach it like it's it's a gambling thing and trading is really something that you're not going to get rich soon um it's going to take years and years and years and if you approach trading with this not even gambling but this um wrong expectations i always ask our students when they come to us ask them so what do you expect from your trading and having unrealistically high expectations is very detrimental because it leads to over leveraging it leads to over trading because you're going to see that you're not reaching your expectations um however it's also going to be very frustrating and it's going to eat up your mental capital once you see that you don't realize your expectations so that's that's very very important it's uh, it's important that you have this it's absolutely clear you're not going to get rich in trading anytime soon it's going to take a lot and a lot of time it's going to be very painful um so this is not a, a quick way out for a, at any case so i think the wrong idea about trading is something that is probably at the at the very top um i think that i would say this is why traders quit very very fast and then obviously a few stick around and then it's really about taking trading more seriously once you have accept okay this is not going to um, be quick then it's about really taking it seriously and really the time that you put in um, needs to be spent in the right way as, as i've seen so many traders they work 9 to 5 they don't have much time they have a family they have friends and their trading is very unstructured they just look at charts they find a few entries and then they log off and go about the evening however you need and in in my students I, i'm not sugar i'm never sugar coding it i tell them this is your time that you're spending to learn forex this is the time that you could spend with your kids this is the time or this is the money that you earn that you're spending for your trading education just for your own sake really make that the time and the money that you spend is worth it so put in the time in your journal put in the time in your watch list in your preparation in your trading plans and really approach it uh, seriously just make it for your own sake not only not even me but make it for your own sake because time and money never get the time so this taking it seriously is then the next step i think but i think the biggest step is those uh, the wrong idea about what trading is and isn't yes like it's whatever you said is just true because you know in our business what most are trying to do is they are going to they are trying to sugar coat trading with a lot of advertisement and thing even i see few brokers they do ads of like in in india whenever i, I open youtube like there is this ad where a guy comes and he says that i have made this many millions in one or two weeks and i am completely shocked like 
that is i think one of the main reason that is that actually influences one's mindset because they came into trading by something that was very very sugar coated right yes and it's it's very sad that we have this thing in our industry because this can be our trading can be blessing for a lot of people but this is something which is very wrong and it happens a lot yeah that's so, one of the main reasons i'm not on on instagram anymore i just i just couldn't take it anymore and i said okay this is enough is enough and yeah i just i just went away but yeah you absolutely understand right <laughs> yeah yeah okay so uh now i won't take like much time of yours and i would like to ask you one final question and it is for all all of us watching you so if you would want to give one advice to all the beginner traders or all the viewers what would that be to you oh, know one. be successful yeah for an advice you can give yeah. multiple that's okay yeah yeah i just think what would be the the most valuable advice i think it's in line with what i've said first of all really understand that this is not going to be a, a quick way out that's going to have you already make the right decisions whether you are or whether you want to stay trading or not i see many traders come and go for good reasons um and you need to make sure that you again i have we have traders that we mentor they have kids they have families and they have jobs and trading is something that is not just something they do because they love it so much it's really something that they have a lot of they put a lot of hope in it so and this time that you're taking away from spending with your kid and putting it into your trading you never get this back so really make sure that the time that you use for your trading is really spent on the right things it's not about hunting in forums for the next strategy it's not finding a new indicator it's not flipping through time frames endlessly and trying to find the best thing it's not about my, uh, 10xing your account by the end of the month it's really developing good trading habits i think that's the processes the good habits building the skills they will help you in other areas of your life as well and that's really where you see the power once you are able to disciplined maybe outside of your trading then you can apply it inside of your trading as well so really focus on those meta skills i think is very very important and not only inside of trading but outside of your trading as well yeah well said that would be a very good advice to all our viewers so finally i would like really thank you to be in the first ever interview that we are having on our channel and it has been a privilege for me to have you here and yeah, those were really all... fun your questions are, are very nice so yeah, yeah. i really thank you so much that. thank you so much that you liked all those questions i really like 